Hola, me llamo Andy, and that is all of the Spanish I know, unfortunately, uh, which is surprising because I've used Duolingo. Anybody use Duolingo? But I, I used it a bunch, and I'm not at all fluent. Now, Duolingo boasts gamification. That's how they like do what they do, right? And, and it certainly is fun, right? You get badges, you get experience, you level up. Um, but it doesn't always do the best job at learning, at actual teaching. Um, and so what I want to talk a little bit about is gamification and what that means in terms of composability in Web3 today. Uh, my background is I'm a former professor of games. Um, I studied digital media effects for a variety of entertainment media um, and how the affordances of systems impacted player or user behavior. So yeah, I studied video games for 10 years. Uh, they gave me tenure and then I left for crypto because hey, we're all here, right? Um, uh, in my time in um, crypto, I worked for a number of uh, protocols that you'll know, Status, Chainlink Labs. And last year, during the metaverse excitement and um, you know, play-to-earn excitement and NFTs, um, what I noticed that, uh, was that there was something missing. There was a lot of talk about gamification in terms of incentives and rewards and bonuses and experience points, but there wasn't a lot of talk about game mechanics and how those work. There was a lot of hand-wringing about it, um, but, but not a ton. Uh, so I now founded a company called Infinity Keys. We are a project um, that tries to think about composability in Web3, especially on the EVM, uh, and how we can make games with that. So uh, quickly, right now, if you go to Infinity Keys IO, you can see a number of different kinds of games that we have. They're mostly games where you have to solve a riddle, find a passcode, or go somewhere and find a passcode, or go collect an NFT. And this is kind of core to um, what I want to talk about in terms of composability. It's, it's not finding a passcode and minting an NFT achievement. That's all that exciting. That's a piece of it. You can make fun games out of that. But what is interesting and exciting is when we take the NFT that you mint, a composable asset, and we require that in the next game. And then we give you a, a reward and an NFT for that. And then we require that in another game. And then... We start interlacing those assets together and requiring them. And then my, my, the, the final sort of end state that we're trying to build at Infinity Keys and that I want to encourage you all to build as well is we allow anyone to lace those assets together. So developers and engineers, you know how to require composable assets you know, for gating and have them talk to each other. But average people don't know how to do that yet they still want to play games and they still want to be able to design games in many cases. And so what I'm advocating for here is a new type of game, a new type of ga a game that relies on composable assets. I'm coining the term composability games. We'll see if it sticks. Um, that allows anybody to do this sort of thing. And um, it, it's not just to make games and have people have good experiences. That is a part of it. That's a piece of it. And that's what we're doing right now. Um, it's very fun, and you're supposed to have like, yay, I solved it, like a good moment. That feels good. That's a nice experience to have with uh, blockchain. But if you take a look at this, um, if you're familiar with uh, complex systems or complex adaptive systems, how they work is you have a whole bunch of small components that interrelate as part of a system. Uh, and as they interrelate and as there's more of them, emergent phenomena start to happen. And I believe, I think, that if we do this with NFTs and we start to connect them together, not just NFTs, but tokens, uh, wallet signatures, all sorts of sort of composable elements that live on EVM, we'll start to see uh, a new kind of, may I use the term metaverse. Uh, metaverse isn't necessarily a 3D digital world. It does not have to be by any means. And what I think is more interesting are deep digital worlds. Hey, everybody. Good to see the room. Uh, and when I talk about deep digital worlds, when, when you play a game, y'all play WoW? Anybody World of Warcrafters? I know there's a couple. Or Breath of the Wild, anybody? Destiny? All right, I know I got some Destiny people in here. When you play one of these games, you go in, there's so much to do. It is an extremely rich and vibrant world because any town you walk into, there's a hundred quests and there's NPCs that tell you where to go. And then you go to the next town and it's a different culture and there's even more to do. We, a, a, a metaverse isn't just a plot of pixelated land that you can build things and put up a new sign or even build games. It's a rich array of things to do. And you don't need 3D worlds to do that. What you need is a whole bunch of stuff to do. Composable assets let us do that if we connect them together using fun experiences called games. 
Um, so this is what uh, I'm building, we're building at Infinity Keys, and uh, it's a piece of what you are all building as well. And so I, I really do think not only is it about composable assets, um, but it's about composable communities. Um, I'm not going to talk uh, about this too much because I do have limited time. Uh, lightning talk, many things to say. Not a lot of time to say it, but that's okay. Uh, come on in. There's plenty of room over here. Um, but kind of core to what I want to think about here that's different than just requiring it, one NFT to mint another NFT is we need to make good games and make good experiences. And that's something that um, we haven't been that concerned with because we've been making sure that the technology works, making sure that we can uh, a stake and those things are secure or can be secured if you use all the best practices, uh, making sure that we do convert to proof of, of stake. Well done. Uh, um, team, but now we can start thinking about user experience beyond just what's on the screen and what do they interact with, but what are the feelings that they have? Games are more than just a place to reward you with even more tokens. They're a place where you can um, uh, help players have interesting emotional experiences. And that is, if you go to Infinity Keys IO and you solve some of our basic puzzles, they're easy, but you're like, all right, you, you feel good. You get that little kick. And that's enough in many cases. And those emotions are really, really powerful attractants as we bring more people into Web3 and into crypto economic systems. Right now, a lot of the emotional um, experiences that people have with crypto is number go up, which feels good, but it's not sustainable. And number goes down, which is terrible and leaves a very long lasting impression. The rest of us are here that like figured out that curiosity. Um, you know, what else can we build? How do we improve systems with that? But most of the people that interact with crypto systems, that's what they deal with. Number go up, number go down. Games can change that. I, I really do think that. Uh, and not only can games change that, um, but by leaning into um, composable assets and, and permissionlessness of systems, we can open that and broaden that to far, further and further reaches. It doesn't have to be me creating games and a set of my NFTs. You can be a fan of a band and create trivia and reward NFTs for very cheap or free on layer twos and roll-ups and all those sorts of things and make those a required asset for the next stage of your own hunt. I, I can make, make a hunt about DevCon where um, you have to go and, and collect POAPs from five different people. You got to collect one from uh, Dave Hoffman and from Preston Van Loon and you got to find Hudson. And now we've got a fun quest. And now we're using the composability of POAPs, which is a fantastic, really fun system that we've come to love. And now we can create layers on top of that. And then once you have that layer, we can create layers on top of that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And by opening it up to community, we're creating uh, stronger systems. I lost track of time, and so I'm getting cut off. So I will wrap up shortly, I promise. Uh, I think composability games will be something new. And this is a meta that we have missed thus far. Um, gaming, Web3 gaming is a, has been about owning your assets, which means selling your assets, assets which is kind of boring. Maybe it's a value for some people, but it is far from the greatest value that we offer as a community of people building together. The, the value is the network. And so let's use the network to create value for people and their experiences. Uh, that's what we're doing at Infinity Keys. You can check us out. We have a number of live puzzles. Um, we recently got a lens grant and so put up, I'm not gonna read all this stuff, but uh, we recently put up a lens challenge where you have to go to different um, dApps on lens, find passcodes, bring them back to mint a key. And then when you collect three keys, you can mint a treasure chest. It's all valueless free NFTs for fun. We're in alpha. Um, but what we're starting to see is people coming into our community, starting to build their own puzzles and figure out how can we expand this world and use the assets that you've already created, that we created all last year ad, ad nauseum. How can we put those together and more in the future to create a wider world of composability in gaming? Uh, there's treasure everywhere. This is a really important statement to me. It's not just the loot that you find. It's there's treasure in you, there's treasure in us and our ideas and the things that we can build together if we use systems that allow for composability uh, and, and interconnection. That is my time. I'm happy to talk to anybody about games. Uh, I also love music or whatever. I'm around, I'm very tall, you can find me. Thank you very much for your time.